What's up guys, it's Jay back again with Tech Everything, and today we're going to take a look at one of my new favorite power supplies for small form factor systems, the HD Plex 160. So in the past we've looked at the HD Plex 300 and the Pico 160 XT. The HD Plex 160 is basically the love child of these two. It combines the 19 volt power brick selection of the HD Plex line, the 300, etc., as well as the form factor of the Pico PSU. Inside the simple brown box, you will find everything you need to get started. The HD Plex 160 is very similar to the HD Plex 300. It features the same voltage range, 16 to 24. It takes DC input, so it will accommodate most of your standard laptop chargers. The biggest difference is the connector type. As you will see, it is not a full board that you have to connect a full 24 pin ATX connector. It's its own self-contained unit. So you just plug it right into your ATX connector like you would a Pico PSU, which obviously saves a ton of space inside your case. The amount of connectors and types provided are more than adequate. You will get one detachable four plus four pin for four and eight pin motherboards as well as one detachable six plus two pin PCI cable for six and eight pin graphics cards, one fixed SATA cable with four SATA connectors, and one fixed Molex connector. For connecting to your external power brick, you will get one four pin to 7.4 by five millimeter DC in barrel connector. When you compare the HD Plex 160 to a Pico 160 XT, you will see immediately the size difference. The HD Plex is a much beefier unit. It is wider, taller, and it has the massive heat sink on the back. You will also notice the amber looking box on the front side. That is where your modular cables go. So you just lift up the hatch, unscrew the screws and screw down your cables. So if you don't need a six or eight pin external connector, you can just leave it off. You also notice the thicker gauge wire used on the HD Plex 160. That will help with running loads over 200 watts. I like the aesthetics of the HD Plex 160 a lot. I think it's a really nice looking unit. It's a little more attractive to me than the Pico with the dark black heat sink on the front and the nice HD Plex logo. I think it looks pretty cool. Setting up the HD Plex could not be any easier. You just plug the actual unit into your 24 pin ATX connector on your motherboard and connect the corresponding cables where you need them to go. As you see from this above shot, you can get a really neat looking system with good airflow when you're using the HD Plex 160. The cables are a good length. They could be a little shorter, but they're fine. I just had to wrap some of them up to make them look a little neater. But other than that, I really had no issues. So if you're looking for a small form factor power supply and looking to run a system in the 200 up to around 220 watt range, I would definitely recommend Chick picking up the HD Plex 160. It's a really great alternative to the HD Plex 300 if you're running a lower power system and don't necessarily need the 300 to 400 watts that that is capable of. Now the HD Plex 160 is priced exactly the same as the Pico 160 XT at $45. At that price, it is a great value, especially when you factor in that you can get cheaper 19 volt bricks than you can 12 volt bricks. So I have mine paired with a 230 watt HP brick that is more powerful than the kit I brought for the 160 XT with a 192 watt power brick and it was also $15 cheaper. The only real advantage I still see for the Pico PSU is the heat output. The HD Plex 160 can get warm, it does get warm under load, whereas the Pico really does not and it also doesn't have a giant heat sink so it doesn't really bump close up to your RAM. Now I didn't have any issues with heat uh, under stress tests, you know, running Prime 95, Firmark, all that good stuff. It was fine. It ate it up with a my system running a 770 and a GTX 1060. But it's just something to look out for if you are running a super, super compact case where heat might be a, a gigantic issue if you don't have proper ventilation. If you want to know any more information, I will drop a link to the written article below. Also, I'll drop links if you want to pick one up for yourself, as well as some power supply recommendations that should keep the package nice and cheap. So as always, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.